Okay, welcome to the course on space flight mechanics. So, in the in this very first lecture, we will get acquainted with the what the space flight mechanics is all about. So, we start with the the requirements for this course. So, to understand this course, you need to know about the basic uh, calculus okay, and uh, mechanics. And the books for this course. So, the recent book which has been published on this orbital mechanics for engineers by Howard D. Curtis. So, this is from Elsevier Press. Okay, rest other books are also available. So, uh, those books are of very high quality, but the book which has been published recently, this are vital mechanics for engineers. This is especially it contains a lot of inf uh, solved problems. Okay, so, uh, you can get benefited by using this. Then, uh, we have some comprehensive books on space flight mechanics. Those are by uh, Valado. Valadud. Okay. So, this book is on the fund fundamentals of fundamentals of astrodynamics. And applications. Okay, so, this is the book uh, the first book which is perhaps not visible on the screen. Uh, the fundamentals of astrodynamics and applications and uh, this is by the from the Kluver publication, Kluver academic publishers is from London. The Second book, uh, then we can. So this we can take as a textbook, and rest others you can use as the reference book. So this is Archie Roy, and this is on the foundations of the astrodynamics. And this is from Macmillan Company. Then a very good book, uh, in fact, uh, I will say this is the Bible for astrodynamics or the space dynamics mathematics. This is by Richard H. Batten and this comprehensively describes the mathematics for the astrodynamics. An introduction to, to the mathematics and Okay, so uh, all these books they are basically concerned with the celestial mechanics or uh, what I am going to explain uh, after writing the names of all these books. So, uh, basically if you are dealing with the celestial bodies, so uh, this the Archie Roy, this is the book which comprehensively discusses about the reference frames and uh, the motion of the celestial bodies. 
okay uh, and obviously this we have written here this to describe the complete mathematics here it uh, takes into account the uh, takes into the account the satellites and also the reference frames are comprehensively described okay while uh, in our the space flight mechanics we also deal with the satellite attitude dynamics means of we have the satellite we can consider as a rigid body or a uh, flexible body and then once it's a moving in the space okay so we want to change the orientation of the spacecraft then how to do it we have to apply the controls and other things so we look into the attitude dynamics and controls so for those issues we have very good books available so th this is the fourth one this uh, the kaplan uh, marshall h kaplan this is the modern spacecraft dynamics and control okay. so this is marshall h kaplan modern spacecraft this is easy to read book uh, but uh, there are many other books on the uh, spacecraft attitude attitude dynamics which specialize in attitude dynamics but those become little more lengthy and uh, then it will be difficult to read also but this one is very simple to read and uh, understand you can uh, start with this book on the attitude dynamics of the satellites so this is published by john wiley and sons this is from new york another book on the space dynamics is by marshall j c d spacecraft dynamics and control this is from the cambridge university press city press uk then uh, an another book uh, which concisely describes about the space flight mechanics this is by weisel William E. Weisel, Space Flight Space Flight Dynamics. and this is published by tata macro hill publication new delhi okay one very good book which covers the space flight mechanics and also a lot of attitude dynamics and it's a uh, considered to be a classical book this is by thom william t thompson but this book is difficult to read okay for the first time reader definitely it's a uh, difficult to follow okay because this book has in short it has uh, 
uh, written the passages so uh, by skipping a number of uh, steps the final answers are written in many cases so it makes it very difficult for the beginners so the book name is introduction to space dynamics and this is from dover publication new york so these are the books that we are going to follow okay then we have the number of lectures that i plan to give we will have on the introduction to space flight mechanics this is the very first lecture then on the particle dynamics basically particle dynamics will consist of particle kinematics here and rest of the part i will cover in the central force motion so two lectures are scheduled for the particle dynamics or say if the particle kinematics then the conic section mathematics of the conic section one lecture is scheduled and then we go into the central force motion in which we will have the two body problem and restricted three body problem and uh, here we have uh, total number of uh, for two body problem eight lectures and uh, for restricted three body problem we have three three six lectures but i hope that i will have to give more lectures than that then we go into the orbit transfer so now the orbit transfer uh, as you will know um, or you might be aware of that once the satellite is launched so for if the orbit is lower means uh, in whichever orbit you want to put the satellite it's not exactly in the same orbit but it's if the initial altitude may be lower okay so in inclination may be different so you need to change the orbit uh, of the satellite so the way we carry out the analysis for changing the orbit so it falls into the orbit transfer domain and here we have the planned number of lectures are total 12 okay so again it may exceed this number of 12 number of lectures okay. thereafter we go into the attitude dynamics okay so, so this is all about the changing the orientation of the satellite okay so here we plan to give around this is six lectures and finally on the rockets so here we will be discussing about the rocket dynamics and uh, uh, we do not go into the details of the propulsion means uh, what are the chemicals being used and other things we will not discuss about that just about the few elementary ideas about the rocket dynamics so it's a basic propulsion so uh, and this constitutes four number of lectures okay so total 40 numbers are of lectures are scheduled but uh, definitely it's uh, going to exceed that and moreover in this course it won't be possible to give uh, solve a number of problems during the lecture so for this we have the web lecture that uh, we will be uh, uploading on the internet so in that web lecture we will be solving a number of problems and that will help you in this course so uh, will i will try to give a minimum whenever i feel that it's necessary to um, give some examples so at that time i will uh, give some examples uh, during the lectures okay so we are start with the basic definition so uh, now let us take the definition of the space the definition of the space is taken the if the altitude exceeds more than 100 km so the objects at that height will be considered to be in the space okay or say that the beyond the altitude of 100 km we consider this as the space now so for the space we define this as the vacuum outside the earth's atmosphere or say the near vacuum outside the earth's atmosphere 
the another definition you can write for this uh, is the volume in which all the celestial bodies So, uh, this constitutes our the definition of the space. Now, you can see that the density of the atmosphere it dies out very fast if you plot it altitude on the x axis and rho or the density on the vertical axis. So, here you will say on the mean sea level if we write this as the altitude 0 here which is the mean sea level. So, in the standard atmosphere we take it at as 1.225 kg per meter cubic and this is at 15 degree centigrade at this temperature this is taken here. And thereafter the density it goes down very fast and it becomes rarefied at very high altitude. Okay. So, at high altitude even though it becomes rarefied, but still it is the molecules of the gases they are present and they produce resistance to the motion of the satellite and they damp out the motion of the satellite and it changes the altitude of the satellite over a period of time. Okay, so, uh, energy of the satellite, it is a well defined equations are there which, it, uh, which will, will take uh, later on, but uh, uh, we avoid the equations at this stage. So, you will see that later on that as the semi major x which is a parameter of the orbit, here you can consider that if this is the earth and around this if this is the satellite moving in a orbit. Okay. So, the distance from the center of the earth to the satellite, okay, this distance will be termed as the radius of the satellite and if this orbit is non, non circular, uh, sorry if, if this orbit is elliptical means it is not circular, then if the same thing you call as the semi major x. So, we will see that as the semi major x decreases, okay, as the semi major x will increase the energy of the satellite will increase, as the semi major x decreases energy of the satellite will decrease. So, over a period of time what happens that satellite is interacting with the atmosphere and this atmosphere it is a resistive force and it tries to take away the energy of the satellite and therefore, the semi major axis of satellite it continuously goes down. So, if your satellite is here and the atmospheric drag is large, so you will see that over a period of time it will start drifting from its orbit and slowly slowly it will start coming into the inner earth atmosphere and as it comes in the dense earth atmosphere then because of the friction with the atmosphere a lot of heat is generated and this gets burnt out. Okay, and that is the reason that the satellites are put at high altitude, so that it remains there for a longer time. So, even at 300 kilometer altitude, okay, the atmospheric drag is significant for the motion of the satellite to change its orbit over a long period of time. Okay. So, to counteract the effect of this atmospheric drag, so the satellite is boosted from time to time and its orbit is raised. Means the satellite will be losing its altitude, it will be moving toward the center of the earth over a period of time. So, the rocket will be fired and the altitude will be raised means the again the satellite will be pushed back into the original orbit. So, this is called the orbit raising. Okay, so, there are many exercises uh, that uh, once we go through the this course, so you will understand all these details. So, equations we avoid at this stage, but uh, it is a very clear 
So, uh, maybe we can write the equations here. Let us say the, this is E is equal to minus mu by 2 a. This is the equation for the energy per unit mass, where a is the semi major x and mu again is, is the gravitational parameter for the, if it is earth, then this is written as the universal gravitational constant times the mass of the earth. Okay. So, th this will be difficult to understand, that is why I want to avoid this. So, here you will see that if a is very large, e becomes less negative okay, means and if a, a is a small, so this becomes more negative, e becomes more negative means it has lesser energy and if a is very large or say it becomes infinite, then e becomes equal to 0, means the total energy of the satellite becomes 0. This is the kinetic energy plus potential energy okay, and that is considered to be the, so the at infinite distance from the center of the earth, earth is the satellite will have 0 energy okay, and that is you will say that a object on the surface of earth is having a negative energy as compared to a satellite resting at an infinite distance. Okay. So, uh, this concept will be clear later on and therefore, I avoid discussing further on, on this. So, we were working out on this space, what this space is. So, after this definition, now we will have a little bit look on to the, what the kinematics, dynamics and uh, astrodynamics, uh, all these terms are. So, we have the terms like few definitions we mention here. Kinematics, okay. it is a concern with the geometry of the motion. geometry of the motion, here mass does not, does not appear in the equation of motion. So, here the either to the mass or the force, the reference will not be done. On the another hand, the kinetics it purely deals with the motion of a particle. Okay. So, in this, this is the branch of dynamics. So, here we will be dealing with the forces, but uh, here the statics or the stationary state of an object is excluded from this branch. So, the branch of dynamics which deals with moving bodies only. Okay, then we have uh, the dynamics. So, this we can define as the branch of mechanics. which deals with forces that produce motion. And ultimately, the mechanics which we have stated here, this can be defined as the science of motion. signs of motion induced by forces. Now, uh, our course is on the space flight mechanics. Now, the space flight mechanics, we can not uh, consider even the in this the uh, heavenly bodies can be included, because we in the space flight mechanics we study the motion of the heavenly bodies also. Okay. So, we can divide it into various parts, 
So, I will say the astrodynamics and then the space dynamics and another one purely the celestial mechanics. So, the celestial mechanics. So, we divide our study into three parts. This is the celestial mechanics. the space dynamics and we will have astrodynamics. Okay, the celestial mechanics it purely deals with the science of heavenly bodies. So, in the celestial mechanics we will be discussing only about the motion of the heavenly bodies. While in space dynamics, majorly we will be discussing about the man made objects which are the natural satellites. So, this we divide into two parts the orbital mechanics and the attitude dynamics. So, our vital mechanics it deals with the trajectory dynamics of the spacecrafts. While here we deal with the vibrational motion. So, this is the attitude dynamics part which deals with the orientation of the satellite. You want to change the orientation of the satellite in a space. So, how to do it? Okay, the question arises. So, this can be done by applying the torque to the satellite, then applying this torque naturally then you need to have either rockets on board. Okay, so, fire two rockets to produce the torque or either you have the reaction wheels. So, various technologies are there which can be utilized. Even if you have the uh, magnetic coils on board that is a current carrying coil uh, on in the satellite. So, it can interact with the magnetic field of the satellite and can produce magnetic torque and therefore, um, uh, it will result in the change in orientation of the satellite over a period of time. So, various technologies can be used for changing the attitude of the dynamic uh, satellite and the, the, the study that we do. So, this study we call as the attitude dynamics and which is followed by the controlling the attitude of the satellite. So, we call this the attitude dynamics and control the overall terminology we use. Here in astrodynamics it is a broad area and in this both the celestial mechanics and the space dynamics you can say it is a combined. So, both the man, man made and man made and heavenly objects are are studied. Okay. Next we have many more definitions are there, uh, but only few definitions will tickle. Now, we come to a spacecraft once we have got acquainted with the basics of the space. So, spacecraft as you know it is a satellite or you say a vehicle in a space. Okay, so, uh, it is a possible that you put even a brick in the 
uh, in the space okay and that brick is moving around the earth so even it is uh, becoming a spacecraft but it's uh, not useful this is just like you know, any object rather than telling this as a spacecraft uh, it won't be good rather we say that uh, it's uh, just like meteor you know, meteorites so we have different meteorites uh, which are floating uh, in the space okay so uh, you will see that uh, in the night you will see that different uh, meteorites they are hitting and coming in the in atmosphere uh, of the earth so they will pass just over the horizons okay and you will see a streak of light going from one place to another place okay and often you call this as the breaking of the stars but actually these are the heavenly objects and once they enter into the atmosphere they get heated and burn and produce light okay so if you are putting a brick in the uh, space so i will not say that this is a spacecraft rather it's an object and it's a obj object in the space okay so for a spacecraft are those objects which are made by the human and be utilized for some certain useful purpose okay for imaging the earth surface or some scientific purpose or other things and uh, giving even uh, putting a brick there or a stone in the okay, space and calling it a spacecraft it's uh, not correct so we avoid the, that kind of terms okay so uh, for the spacecraft now we can go into the little bit history of this the first spacecraft which was launched in the space it was sputnik sputnik 1 and it was launched in 1957 on october 4 and weighted 200 pounds this was a russian satellite this is the first satellite explorer which is a american satellite it was launched in 1958 somewhere in january february okay and weighted 20 pounds luna 1 again this is a russian satellite and uh, it was launched on january 2 1959 so it was a satellite to orbit the moon but it did not orbit the moon it escaped it escaped moon okay so missed something by 5000 kilometers the surface of the moon so next again the russian satellite luna was sent and this impacted so this was on september 12 1959 it's a launched and this was the first to impact the moon so we can see that uh, how the satellite uh, launch it started so before that we have a long history of satellite launch the people have been trying to um, make rockets the uh, putting before that the balloons were made which were sent into the Mm, sent to the higher altitude so the continuous effort were done and thereafter only such uh, events could take place so after the launch of the first the satellite the sputnik 1 the russia launched another satellite luna 1 so then luna 2 and luna 2 it impacted it was meant to impact the mm, surface of the moon so first to impact the surface of the moon
okay so, and then during this cold war era then a uh, virtually a race between the us and uh, russia started and they tried to excel each other in the space technology so we had the apollo 11 you know that apollo 11 the uh, astronauts on apollo 11 it first landed on the moon but before that the number of missions of apollo took place okay so apollo 8 it was first to leave the earth atmosphere with astronauts okay so uh, astronauts were on board on apollo 8 and this was the first which left the earth atmosphere okay so this is the history which dates back to before 1969 once the um, apollo 11 was launched so up in the apollo 11 so launch was on july 16 1969 and this is the greenwich mean time okay and uh, this landed this the command module it's a various model lunar model and the command model was there in the apollo so the lunar model it went to the moon and it landed on the moon surface landed on moon surface on july 20 1969 this is gmt this is greenwich mean time this time is very important what the time is in india it's not the same time uh, in the usa okay so therefore this is being referred to the gmt time so lately india also started in this field and it launched its first satellite aryabhat in 1975 from russian cosmodrome in 1975 from russia in 1975 april 19 and this was the first indian satellite Okay, thereafter India has gone a long way in becoming independent in the field of at least the fabrication of the satellites. So, still uh, putting very big satellites we require very powerful rockets and those rockets which are the uh, GSLV geostationary satellite launch vehicle and uh, who, whose cry, the upper stage is the cryogenic stage means the liquid hydrogen is used there. So, uh, that technology is still being developed this has not been mastered but in the as far as the solid rocket motors and liquid rocket motors are concerned so those are already mastered and uh, india was the pslv which is the uh, is a workhorse of our indian space research organization so it's uh, working very well and uh, it's a very consolidated technology so now after the launch of the Aryabhat, the next in this series was the Bhaskara, which was launched on June 7, 1979 and this was again launched from Russia. Okay, so, we see that uh, satellite launch, uh, it has gone a long way. Now, for the satellite launching we need rockets okay so till now our own rockets we are not developed then the efforts we are made to develop our own rockets so in this series the satellite launch vehicle slv 3 okay this is called the satellite launch vehicle satellite 
launch vehicle. Okay, if we add before this A, so ASLV, this is called augmented satellite launch vehicle. If we add here P, this is called the polar satellite launch vehicle. If we put before this the G, this is called geostationary satellite launch vehicle. So, this SLV tried to launch the Rohini satellite. in the orbit on August 10, 1979, but this failed. Okay, then another version of the SLV-3 on July 1980, another satellite named Rohini was successfully, Rohini satellite was successfully launched. it was successfully put in the orbit. Okay, so, you already uh, know this PSLV and GSLV and often it keeps coming in the news. Okay, now, the space vehicles, they have various categories. Okay. Now, space vehicles, you can say uh, our uh, spacecraft for scientific purpose. A spacecraft for doing some carto, uh, producing cartographic map or remote sensing, military purpose. Okay, military purpose means it's uh, doing the spying. Okay, and uh, then you have the space stations available, which are uh, you once launch it and uh, keep it in the space and satellite can go from this place to uh, the space and it can dock to those space station where already some scientists may be working. So, the scientists from the earth they can go and join there and the scientists who are working there already they can come back. So, it is a permanent station type. Okay. So, they, those are called the space station. Thereafter, we have uh, the reusable launch vehicles. So, reusable launch vehicles, uh, as you know that uh, re reusable implies that you can use it again and again. So, once the satellite is being launched, so the it is being launched using the rockets. So, rockets they launch the satellite and the whole the structure is later on destroyed. So, uh, in the reusable vehicle, there will be one main rocket which will take it to certain altitude and thereafter the reusable launch vehicle, it can it will have its own propulsion system. So, it will launch the reusable launch vehicle, the rocket will launch the reusable vehicle into the orbit and it will orbit uh, in the space, it can change its trajectory also, by, because it has its own propulsion system. And thereafter, once the mission is over, so it can come like, uh, come down and uh, it can land like an aircraft and again it can be used. Okay. So, here the landing facility is there. So, if the landing facility is not there, then what you need to do? So, you need to have some parachute and ultimately you make the um, satellite launch in the um, ocean. Okay. So, that, that was what was the uh, procedure carried out earlier for the early for the uh, very early manned missions. But the, with the use of this uh, reusable launch vehicles, so those situations where uh, are now avoided. So, here the space vehicle categories, we can put like uh, Columbia, Challenger. So, these were our reusable launch vehicles or reusable vehicles you say. this is reusable vehicles, not launch vehicles, because these are boarded on the heavy rockets, powerful rockets and then launched. Okay. 
then we have the category of unmanned satellites. So, these are manned reusable launch vehicles are manned unmanned satellite categories we will have for military purpose. for communication purpose. So, for communication purpose, you know that uh, the geostationary satellites are used. So, in this geostationary satellites, you have the earth here, it is around radius we can write 6400 kilometers, it is less than that the mean radius of the earth, but let us write this as 6400 kilometers. And at a distance of from the center of earth 42000 kilometers, you have the geostationary satellites. So, on the geostationary satellites, the transponders are there okay. and the rate of the angular rate of geostationary satellites are same as the angular rate of earth. And therefore, if a, you are sitting here or if you have something to watch at this much of distance, you will see always overhead this satellite because as it rotates from here to here. Okay, you also rotate from this place to this place. So, always it will be visible overhead. So, this is called geostationary satellite and this happens because it is in the radius of 42000 kilometers at which it is a angular rate is same as the angular rate of the earth. So, this is used for communication purpose your TV show and other telephones you see all these are based on this. Okay, long distance telephony. So, in this series you have the all the INSAT satellites INSAT, the Indian national satellites. Then we can see, we can state as remote sensing satellites. remote sensing satellites. So, in this series we have the IRS Indian remote sensing satellites. Okay, another one, the third one we can write as space stations and they serve as they serve as port in a space. Okay, just like on the airport aircraft can halt, so the spacecraft can go and halt at they can dock themselves to this space station and if it is having uh, if, if you are sat inside the satellite if it is a uh, astronauts are there. So, those astronauts astronauts they can come out and go into the space station and if there is already laboratory is there on board. So, uh, they can do some experiments there. Okay, so, they are very big in size. We have Salus, Mir, the Skylab under these categories. Then we have space probes, these are interplanetary satellites. that is going from one planet to another planet and space ships and it still it is a futuristic which will take man from one planet to another planet. Manned interplanetary so 
So, man has gone to the neighboring heavenly body which is the moon, but not to the still the Mars is away any so other planet. Moving to any other planet, it is definitely going to take a lot of time and uh, you need all the preparation for that, risking the life everything, all the things are involved in it. So, uh, if uh, as a child ever if you have gone over the roof and you might have seen sometimes in the during the dark night, the satellites may appear to move and they move very fast and uh, it is because of the solar panels are there and uh, those solar panels once the sunlight beams it, so they become visible even during the uh, So, uh, it they become visible, the satellites become visible even uh, if they are at so much of distance, okay, 300 kilometer satellites. So, obviously, here the satellites are 42,000 kilometers you cannot see, but the lower altitude satellites sometimes they are visible in the sky okay. and obviously, they move very with very fa fast speed and the speed is around 7.5 kilometers per second. Okay, uh, or more than that, uh, this can be computed. Okay, so say uh, around eight kilometer per second. Okay, and this is very high speed. So aircraft speed is quite low. Uh, you know the aircraft speed; it can be up to the 700 kilometers, 800 kilometers, like the Boeing aircraft per hour. Okay, and you, if you convert it, say 900 kilometers, so we can convert it, multiplying by five by 18. So, 250 meter per second, okay, it is a very small as compared to this 8 kilometers per second. Okay. So, these satellites sometimes you can see it with your naked eyes. So, in this satellites it is a very peculiar that uh, we will have the satellite say this is the equator of the earth. So, in this equatorial plane, the geostationary satellites are placed. Say, I take a larger distance. So, from here to here at the 42,000 kilometers, I put a satellite here in this place. So, this is my satellite. Now, if this satellite is exactly in the equatorial plane of the earth, okay, say this is the equatorial plane then it will you can and also the satellite is moving in a orbit of 42,000 kilometer and this is circular. This is nearly 42,000 kilometer, this is the circular orbit. Then this satellite will always appear over overhead okay, and therefore, it can be used for communication. You may be on the equator here in this place, another person may be on the equator here in this place but directly you cannot communicate from here to here, okay. but using this satellite by sending the signals okay. from the you can send the signal from this place to the satellite. So, transponders are there. So, those transponder will magnify the signal and send it back to the earth. Okay. So, uh, this signal will be available to you. So, somewhere your uh, TV show is being transmitted from this place and you are watching it over here in this place. So, therefore, the TV show which are being broadcasted from uh, telecasted from uh, um, say India. So, it can be observed uh, worldwide. Okay. So, if you have multiple satellites, if directly say after some angle, it will not be visible once uh, because uh, this line is from here to here. Okay. So, uh, as it becomes tangent to the earth from here, as it becomes tangent to the earth beyond that range, you cannot go. Okay. So, in this range you cannot go. So, either you can have another station which will receive this signal broadcast uh, telecast it again or broadcast it, 
to the another geostationary satellite and from there again it can be received in the here in this place or either from this place it's itself if it is received to another satellite from there it can be sent to the surface of the earth. So, technologies then accordingly they will differ they, these are all the communication technologies they come into the play. Okay, but before that our the space engineers role it lies in the designing the spacecraft okay, uh, those who are uh, dealing with the electronics part okay, uh, looking into the at the dynamics of the aircraft. So, again the attitude dynamics and uh, studying it is in uh, all these things in detail. So, you need to know the dynamics of the spacecraft very well. So, uh, somebody may come work in the area of the controls, but uh, without knowing the dynamics it, it will not be of any help. So, attitude dynamics it becomes an integral part of that. So, therefore, we see that uh, the technology it becomes uh, complicated as we go for more and more applications. So, we have the geostationary satellite and then we have the geosynchronous satellite. So, geosynchronous satellites are not exactly in the circular orbit, okay. it is an elliptical orbit. So, if it is in elliptical orbit, it will sometimes appear if you are here in this place. So, it will sometimes appear front of you, sometimes it will appear back of you. So, it will be oscillating over your head okay. and this happens because it is an elliptical orbit and also there is the left not drift if this is not exactly in the equatorial plane. If it is off the equatorial plane, it is making certain angle the orbit of the satellite is making certain angle with the orbit uh, this equatorial plane then the north south drift is also seen. So, we stop at uh, this place and uh, we all these details we will learn in the lectures later on. Um, so, thank you very much. Uh, next time we will we'll start with the particle kinematics and then we will progress learning into the uh, specified flight mechanics. Thank you very much.